Okay, this video on chapter seven of test driven and development by example, we're going to look at the chapter called apples and oranges. So we implemented the common equals method last time. And this time we're going to look at comparing francs with dollars. And the way we implemented it, it's going to misbehave on us because obviously five dollars should not equal five francs. So let's go over to IntelliJ and we'll take a look at that and we'll prove it out. So the problem is, let's come in here and now, the author, if you're following the code examples in the book, he does uh, combine some of the, the stuff here. As far as the test, he combines all the quality tests into one method. And so I am deviating a bit from that. But if I come into this test here and say assert not equals new dollar five and a new frank of five, our desired behavior is for that to be not equal. And the, the problem is the way we've coded it, it's going to be equal. We can see there now that the test is failing because it expected not equal, but it was actually equal. And the problem is both dollar and franc are money objects, and we are simply comparing the integer amount. So the amount property being an integer being inherited from the, the base class that is going to cause us a problem because if we don't want money and francs to be the same. So now what we can do is come in here and add in a very simple implementation. So what we're doing it, I'll actually break this down to line, make it a little more readable. So we can see here, I added in a test saying and get class. So that's going to be this. I could actually make that a little more clear like so. So, saying that this object that we're working on get class uh, is, needs to be equal. So let's go ahead and run our test now and that should clear up our failing test. And you can see now that that is working. I set up an assertion. So we can see IntelliJ as I ran down there. I think that's a little bug in this version of IntelliJ. So now we can see that that is in fact running okay. And my dollars do not equal francs, but one thing that's not very pretty or elegant about this is that we are depending on the class. We don't really have a currency attribute. So and that is something that we want to evolve our model to. So let's go over and take a look at our to-do list. Now you can see that I've crossed out the compare of francs with dollars. We do have that functionality working. And I put a task on there for currency. So we want to use something a little more elegant than the class name for the currency code. So we want to be able to handle multi-currency. So we're going to do that in a future video. We'll address that. As you can see, we're going through and iterating the code. And as we come up with things that we want to improve, we put that on our to-do list. So it's a very iterative process as we go through, do these iterations one at a time. When we notice something that's wrong, we'll go ahead and add it into the to-do list.